Family Theater presents Eddie Fisher. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents To the Losers Belong the Spoils. And now, here's your host, Eddie Fisher. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, To the Losers Belong the Spoils, featuring Vivi Janice as Myrna. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, your attention, please. I'm sorry to inform you that Miss Duffy will be unable to appear at this press conference. Uh, wait, please, gentlemen. But we have someone. We have someone who can answer your questions about Miss Duffy as well as she would herself. Someone who has sort of mothered her through the various stages of her climb to fame. So may I present Miss Myrna Fagan. Miss Fagan. Thank you. Incidentally, boys and ladies, if you'd just use the term big sistered instead of mothered, I'd appreciate it. Uh. After all, when a girl is, uh, well, nearly 30, you know how it is. <laughs> now, um, Gloria and I have a plane to catch, so if you don't mind, instead of answering questions, I'll just make a statement about Gloria. I'll try not to leave anything out. If you want to know how one small head can carry all she knows, I can't tell you. And for that matter, neither can she. But I can tell you just about everything else. To start at the beginning, well, let's see, that would be when we worked at the library together. Whew, what a grind that was. You see, the library has a deal most people don't know about, the Public Information Service. To answer the questions people phone in, they employ quite a number of girls. And we look up the answer and give it to the people. Gloria never had to look them up. And me, well, I had Gloria. <laughs> Public Library Information Service. May I help you? The what? Oh, yeah. Uh, just a minute, please. Gloria. Yes. He wants to know something about some element or something. What department would have that, do you suppose? Oh, I'll take it. Hello? What was your question, please? Element 80? Oh, it's Mercury, sir, or Quicksilver. Yes, sir. Well, I can tell you Public a Public Library about it. Information Service. Yes, sir, I'll Pardon me? I have it written up. Oh, I see. Well, look, if you'll wait just a second, That's I'll have that information for you. Oh, for crying out loud. What's the matter? I got another one of those poetry things. Where's the Bartlett's? Want me to take it? Well, I don't want to trouble you, honey. No trouble. Want me to take it? Well, if you don't mind. Come on, give me the phone, Myrna. <laughs> Thanks. Hello? Hello? Hm. Must have hung up. Why, the bomb, and I would have looked it up. So faithful in love and so dauntless in war. There never was a night like the young Lochinvar. Oh, Lochinvar, by that fellow, um, what's his name? Sir Walter Scott. Yeah. He's one of my favorites. <laughs> I know. I see you reading that stuff during lunch hour. Hey, uh, I know some Scott. You want to hear it? Mm -hmm. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. What I mean is, honey, you're kidding yourself when you spend all your time with that stuff. I like it. Yeah, I know. Knights on white chargers, rescuing the beautiful princess. Honey, that stuff's murder. Murder? You keep reading that guy, and you'll wind up just like I did. Nobody will be good enough for you, unless he's wearing armor and riding a white charger. That's not true at all. Isn't it? Not at all. Then what is true? Well, I, I'm not the most beautiful girl in town, you know. Well, you're better looking than I was at your age, and I got asked a few times. Well... When would I get a chance to meet anybody on this job? At least with poetry, I get to read about romance. That's what I mean. You ought to get out and circulate on your lunch hour. With whom? The high school boys in refile? Yeah, that's true. 
Oh, look, I, I know I should circulate more, Myrna. I've been 24, three years running now. It's later than I thought. Maybe I... Well, maybe I just don't know how to circulate. Maybe I just better stick with the books. Public Library Information Service. Hey, give me that. Hello? Uh, we're working on a big problem right now. Can you call back later? Thank you. Myrna, you shouldn't have done that. Ah, why not? Well, you'll get us fired, for one thing. Well, maybe that wouldn't be so bad. At least we get out of this rut. Well, I don't know about you, but I need this job. Yeah, like a hole in the head, you need this job. What do you mean? You could get any kind of employment you wanted. Myrna, you think I could get a job in, well, say, an insurance company? I think maybe you could get a job as a brain surgeon if you really wanted to. Now you're being ridiculous. You still don't believe me, huh? Okay, look. You've been here about five years, right? Well, that's about right, yes. Yeah. And I've been here a little more than a year. Do you know, in all that time, I have never seen you refer to a textbook to answer a question? Any kind of a question. But surely we, we must have been getting easy questions then. Listen, you may not know this, and I may be a fool for bringing it to your attention, but ever since I came here, you've been doing most of my work for me. I have? Yeah. I get a call and I say, wait, wait, I'll show you. Public Library Information Service. Just a minute, sir. I'll get that information for you. Honey, in music, the rule of the octave. Oh, uh, the art of accompanying the scale. Oh, wait a second. You might as well tell this guy. Here. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes, sir. The rule of the octave, according to Elson's, is defined as the art of accompanying the scale, either ascending or descending, when taking the bass with the proper chords or harmony. You're welcome, sir. There, you see what I mean? That's the way I handle most of my calls. Yesterday, you spent so much time talking to that fellow from the Institute. Oh, you mean about Einstein and the space-time continuum? Mm, that's the cat. You talked to him for about two hours, and I had to handle all my own calls. I thought I'd lose my mind. I was ready to quit. Oh, girl, if I knew what you know, I'd get out of this rut so quick. You would? How? Are you kidding? Well, not at all. Well... I'd, I'd find some way of making a little money quick, and then I'd figure on getting a position. Not a job. A position. Where I'd meet people, like maybe a travel agency in Bermuda or someplace like that. Bermuda? You got something against Bermuda? Oh, no, no. I think it'd be wonderful. Just wonderful. But, well, you said something about finding a quick way to make some money. A cinch. For you, not for me. How? Ah, oh, wait a minute. I tell you, and then you'd do it, and I'd be stuck here. And alone, I'd last about two days. No, Myrna, I'd be willing to pay. Oh, honey, pay? I was kidding. No, I mean it. It wouldn't be fair otherwise. Well, what I mean is, I don't know my way around very well. You follow me? I may know the world a little better than you. There's not much I could do without a little mothering. I haven't got that many years on you. Now, if you mean managing. That's exactly what I mean. Well, wait a minute. On those terms, maybe we can work something out. Yes, sir. I think we can maybe do business. Well, when I went home that night, I did a lot of thinking. You know, at first I thought maybe she was having a big joke at my expense. To me, it didn't figure that a girl could know so much without knowing she knew so much. You get what I mean? No? Well, doesn't matter anyway. The upshoot of the evening's thinking was what finally came of the arrangement. I made a few phone calls, then the first thing the next morning, the kid and I called on Cosgreaves and Associates. Look, I'm only her manager. If you don't believe me, talk to her. What do you think, Niles? I think we got another crank on our hands. That's what I think. You produce a big quiz, and right away you're up to your neck in cranks. Yeah. She's right out there in your outer office. Now call her in and ask her some questions. You ask her, who invented the steamboat? She'll say, A.J. Steamboat. Bing. Right like that. A.J. Steamboat? Oh, whoever it was. You know what I mean. Yes, but it just seems a, a little unusual for a potential contestant to have a manager. Yes, doesn't it? Young lady, thank you for dropping in. We'll keep your client in mind. If something should come up, we'll... No, you don't. I'm staying right here till you talk to her. You are not? I am, too. You may not realize this matter, but... Miss! Be that as it may, you may not realize this, but The Sky is the Limb is a very important show. The biggest money show in television. And as its producer, my time is too valuable. You're costing me money. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Niles. There's no use for anybody to get all upset over this. I'm not losing my temper. Call the police. Look, Niles. 
Wouldn't it be simpler just to call the girl in and ask her a few questions? She just might have something. Be that as it may. And if you I... call the police now, as it may take them 20 minutes to get here. I mean, seeing that it's not an emergency. 20 minutes? And your time is valuable. Well, I suppose you're right. Go and get her. Right. That's all I ask. Give her a chance. Well, we can't afford to overlook any bets anyway now. Yeah. Uh, will you come in, please? Me? No. Oh, yes. I know you won't be sorry, Niles. Mr. Cosgrave, madam. Miss, and you can call me Myrna. Yeah, thank you. Uh, would you like to sit down right there? Thank you. Uh, Miss Duffy, is it? Yes, that's right. Mm-hmm. Miss Duffy, this is Mr. Cosgrave. How do you do? Not too well. Your manager, this woman is your manager? Yes, sir. Yes. Well, she says you want to be a contestant on The Sky's the Limit? Yes, sir, I suppose so. Oh, you suppose so? Well, I mean, yes, I'd like to be a contestant. Well, she said that you wanted to pick as your subject all categories. All categories? That's what she said. You might as well, kid. How old are you, Miss Duffy? How old? Well, I, uh... Uh, <laughs> doesn't even know her own age. <laughs> oh, she does, too. She just doesn't have to tell you. What kind of a question is that, anyway? Don't you answer it, honey. Of course she doesn't have to answer it. Niles, you didn't mean it. I mean to find out how old she is, that's what I mean. I'm 27. You're 27. And you consider yourself an expert on every subject in the world. Oh, no, sir, I don't. A hoax. I knew the whole thing was a hoax. What I mean, sir, was that Myrna considers me an expert on everything in the world. Oh, oh, well, that's different. Well, ask her some questions. Yeah, why not, Niles? Miss Duffy, um... Let me see now, uh, Miss Duffy, if I... Oh, hang on, I can't think of any questions. <clears throat> How about the test questions in the box, Niles? Of course, of course. All right, now, 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 let me see. Uh, we'll give her a few on general science, eh, huh, Ben? <laughs> general <laughs> science. Oh, this. Miss Duffy... What is the largest animal that ever lived on the earth? The whale. Honey, the dinosaurs. <laughs> I got you. Yes, I got you. First crack out of the box, too. There's your expert. What is the answer, Niles? Huh? On the card. Oh. It says here... The whale. Ha! Oh. Well, let's try another one. Miss Duffy, what is the atomic number of carbon? Seven. Seven? Oh, well, I meant the atomic weight. Fourteen. <laughs> That's telling them, kid. Is she right, Niles? I'm afraid so. I think we got ourselves a contestant. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's not be too hasty. Hasty? Though. Niles, she knew all the answers. Why not use her? Well, uh, Well, give me a reason. One reason is that this woman's been trying to bully me into it. And I don't like being bullied. Another reason... Well, I don't feel that we should stick out our neck. There's something askew here. We both work at information service. I told you that. And you both spent all your working hours looking up answers to difficult questions. Exactly. Well... Then why doesn't this woman I know? wish you'd stop referring to me as this woman. Be that as it may. Why don't you know what she knows? Maybe she does. Uh, Miss... Uh, Fagan. Uh, Fagan. Fagan. Then. Who wrote Gulliver's Travels? Um, Gulliver? Oh, you see what I mean, then? Wrong, huh? And it wasn't A.J. Steamboat, either. Miss Duffy, I don't suppose you have any explanation. I read a lot. Oh, she reads a lot. And I don't forget. You don't forget what? Anything. Niles? Oh, I think we'd better stick to the old ladies. They're, they're substantial. Yes, but having an attractive young lady once in a while would kind of dress up the show. Ah. And you as the producer, Niles, and I as the moderator, we kind of got to think of the good of the show. <sighs> That's and... right. Miss Duffy, would she, Miss Fagan, that is, have to be part of the deal? Oh, definitely. Come on, how about it, Niles? You'll take full responsibility? Yes, I will. All right. But I'm going to warn you beforehand. I personally will make up the questions. Sign her up for next week. Now, that was when things started to happen. Not when we got on the show, but right then, before we'd even left the building. We'd no sooner reached the elevator when Gloria turned to me and said... Did you hear what he said, Myrna? That he himself was going to make up the questions? Ah, oh, don't let that bother you, kid. Not him. I mean what Ben said. Ben? Oh, uh, Mr. Duncan. He said I was attractive. You know, I never imagined he'd have red hair. Do you like red-headed men, Myrna? <laughs> You may not think that was very important, but it really has a lot to do with the story. You see, we never intended to go for more than $5,000, 10 at the most, 
But the way she answered the questions, we were up to that in three weeks. After the fourth week, I asked her to quit. After the sixth and seventh, I asked her if we might please take the money and go to Bermuda. She always had the same answer. But if we quit, it'll be all over, and then... And then... And then you won't see Ben anymore. Oh, just one more week, Myrna. Then we'll take what money we have and quit the show. All right. Just one more week. After the eighth week, we could have bought Bermuda, or at least a good-sized chunk of it. When the telecast began on the ninth week, millions of Americans may have been cheering her on and Gloria may have been happy as a lark, but Mr. Cosby was very unhappy. The sponsor was very unhappy, and I was in a panic. And now, ladies and gentlemen, that charming lady that you've all been waiting to see, the girl who's proven herself an expert in all categories, the beautiful Miss Gloria Duffy. Myrna, did you know what you were doing to me? Did you know I'll be ruined if she answers tonight's question? Ruined? I've tried to get her to quit. You should have tried harder. Why, this will be the end of quiz shows. The end of an era. Gloria? Gloria, it's good to see you again. Thank you. It's good to see you again. Well, I must say, Gloria, that in these past few weeks, you've really proved that the sky is the limit on the sky's the limit. Yes, and, and I'd like to say right now how much I'm enjoying being on the program with all the wonderful people connected with well, it. Thank you very much, Gloria. Well, I suppose I better ask now the fateful question, but first, let's recap. So far, Gloria, you have won $320,000. And now, Gloria, the answer to the question, are you going to try for $640,000? Well, I... I... Yes? I think I'll try for the 640000 Niles, Niles, I'm sorry. Believe me, I'm sorry. We're well, not dead yet, Myrna. She hasn't answered the questions yet. Gloria? Gloria, since we're reasonably sure that no one in the audience can coach you, we will do away with the isolation booth this time. And now... Here is your question. Listen carefully. It's in four parts as usual. Now, you'll have 30 seconds to think over your answer. I will then repeat the question. And now, here is the question, part one. A few years ago, the Victor Record Company put out a record with a three-word title. Now, the second word in that title was Gertie. I'll repeat that. Gertie. Now, what was the record? Who wrote the song? And who performed it? Now, the second part of the question... Tell me, in what orchestral work does the following combination of notes appear more than 15 times? Our musical director, Mr. Henry Mancini, will play them for you now. Mr. Mancini? And now, Gloria, the third part of your question. What emperor of what nation during that period has been described as an Illyrian officer, the grandson of a slave, and a barracks emperor? And now the fourth part, identify this line. Rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. You have 30 seconds now, Gloria. Take your time, give yourself every possible break, and think over your answer very carefully. Time is up. I will now repeat the question. Oh, that won't be necessary. Unless, of course, you want to. Well, no, no, that's all right. Well, the record with a three-word title with Gertie for the second word would be Hurdy Gertie Blues. Right. By Gene Scott, performed by Ross Gorman and the Virginia. That's right. That's what it says right here on the card. Now, the second part of the question, there were three notes from an orchestral work. I'm not sure about that one. May I hear it again, please? It wouldn't be against the rules, Oh, would it? no, no, no. You were supposed to hear it twice. Henry, please. Yes. That's from the Ponzinetti Concerto for Piano and Orchestra. It was never performed because it was discovered that the score called for the pianist to have six fingers on his left hand. 
Um, now, the third part about the emperor. That would be uh, Diocletian of Rome. Right. And the fourth part, rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. I read somewhere that the line was originally an inscription on a cannon near the grave of President Bradshaw. It's on a hill near Martha Bay in Jamaica. That's right, Gloria. You have just won $640,000. I'm ruined. I'm ruined. How could she know about that concerto? Well, there must be a copy of it in our library. But she doesn't play a musical instrument, and nobody just reads music. Nobody. She does. Pardon me, your name Cosgrave? Pardon me? Is your name Cosgrave? I'm with the Treasury Department. I'm Niles Cosgrave. I'm with the Treasury Department. When your program is over, I'd like to talk to you and to your contestant. The Treasury Department. That uh, means... Um... Could be, lady. Mm -hmm. Could be. But I expected to pay taxes on my winnings. Miss Duffy, do you know how much you'd pay? Yes. On 640000 it would be about... Oh, never mind, never mind. What are you getting at, Mr. Tanner? Yes, it sounds like you're rooting for the wrong team, Mr. Tanner. Well, look at it this way. Since Miss Duffy hit $1,000, every time she answers a question correctly, the amount doubles. You don't have to tell me. Well, we've got it figured that in six more weeks, she will have won more money than the program sponsor is worth. I still don't get it. All right, look at it this way. Say she wins it all. Right away, she loses most of it in federal and state taxes. Now, you follow me so far? Well, I, I think I see. She wins, but an entire industry suffers. One manufacturer is out of business, a manufacturer who would otherwise be a tax source for the next 50 or 100 years. Thousands of people who also have taxable incomes who work for your sponsor would be out of work. Now, what I'm trying to do is to save the goose that lays the golden egg. Now, what it amounts to, Miss Duffy, is simply this. It would be in the best interest of your government and your fellow man if you missed the next question. Miss the next question? Then we'd wind up with just the consolation money? And the knowledge that you've done your government and your fellow man a real service. Uh, perhaps some uh, uh, adjustment uh, could be made. Uh, how about that, Cosgrave? Of course, of course. Yes. Why, that would solve everything. But it doesn't feel right. It would feel like a bribe. Niall, she's right. Uh, ben... You're supposed to be on my side. But it would be a bribe. Now, we've thought about the ethics of the matter, and we have what I think might be a, um, a workable solution. What? Well, uh, this week, the Atomic Energy Commission is going to publish some heretofore unknown facts about the Lorenz equation. Now, you keep her away from the library, from the radio, television, everything, for a week, and make up your questions from the information in the AEC report. I don't know. Uh, Myrna, do something. Talk to her. Uh, Gloria, I think he's right. Ben, what do you think I should do? Well, Gloria, I, I work for Niles. You want me to tell you? Would your working for Mr. Cosgrave make your answer any different? No. No, I don't think it would, but... Well, Gloria, I think you should take Mr. Tanner's suggestion. Look, maybe Ben can help keep you busy. I mean, away from the library and the radio and the television for a week. Myrna. A fine idea. Oh, but I'm sure Ben wouldn't want oh, to... Oh, I think that's a pretty good idea myself. In fact, I kind of like it. And that's it. The rest you know. Last night, she missed the $1,280,000 question. Now, if you ladies and gentlemen will excuse me, I have a plane to catch. No, oh, I'm sorry, really, I've got to be... If you have any further questions, I'll be in my office between two and four. Thank you very much. Uh, this way, Myrna. Well, that's that, huh? Yeah, guess so. Was the adjustment uh, satisfactory? Oh, very satisfactory. Well, I guess I better be going. I, I suppose so. I wonder where Gloria is. Oh, didn't she tell you? She's not going. Said something about having a date with Ben or something. A date with Ben? Oh, I thought he was only supposed to keep her busy till the show last night. Yes, they seem to have taken quite a shine to each other. Uh, Bermuda's not going to be much fun all by myself. No? Well, do you have to go? What'd you say? Oh, hang it all. I, I've gotten kind of used to you. What are you trying to say? Well, I thought if you could stay, that... Uh, 
You and I... Um, Mr. Well, Cosgrave, I am a lady. Well, of course you are. When a man is married. Uh, but I'm not married. You're not? <laughs> not a bit. Oh, well, well, can you imagine that? All these weeks for the show and I never knew that. <laughs> did you say something about having lunch? Well, yeah, yes, Why, well, that's almost impossible to believe that such a charming man wouldn't have... Wouldn't have been captured by now. <laughs> well, perhaps I have been a little too cautious. And the city is so beautiful this time of year. I can't see how Bermuda could be any improvement. Not very. <laughs> oh, well, you know. <laughs> This is Eddie Fisher again. In my work, I've traveled all over the United States, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, Cleveland, and during that time, I've come into contact with literally thousands of teenagers. And I think I can safely say that one quality of teenagers that I find unanimous throughout the country is the gang spirit. Now, this gang spirit is a funny thing, for if it's channeled in the wrong direction, it can become the cause of juvenile delinquency such as the much-publicized gang fights. But on the other hand, this same gang spirit can be a source for good, for it's this quality of joining together as a group that puts out a weekly high school paper, for instance, or makes a June prom such a success, or brings about a youth for religion movement. I think the teenagers really have something there, and I believe that the rest of the world could learn a great lesson from them, for it's this spirit of joining together that can, to my way of thinking, bring about world peace. And if we, as nations, could gang up on God, so to speak, by joining together in daily family prayer, I'm sure that world peace would be inevitable. Just as family theater always reminds you, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed to The Losers Belong the Spoils. Addie Fisher was your host. Featured in our cast were Vivi Janis, Herb Ellis, Julie Bennett, Howard McNear, and Herb Vigran. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan, with music composed and conducted by Henry Mancini. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us again next week when family theater will present The Fourth Act, starring Stephen McNally. Billy Burke will be your hostess. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. <laughs>